Hi everybody, well I'm just off the Irish International Business Network second ever webinar with Stuart Lancaster. Many of you may know him. He is the senior coach at Leinster and also has been head coach at England Rugby and had an absolute masterclass in leadership to share with us today. So uh, I wanted to share my summary with you for those of you who couldn't join us. I have to say it was really, really well, wor well worthwhile. Um, there was people today on from the United Kingdom, New Zealand, New York, Dubai, Budapest, Moscow, as well as all counties in Ireland as well. So uh, a great collection of people from right around the world and I believe that they have many more uh, to come. So if you want to check out upcoming events, check out IIBN.com. Right, so Stuart start off, started off by telling us a little bit about his background. Um, he was born onto a farm, then he became a teacher uh, before moving into coaching and then a leadership role. And uh, so he took us on a quick whistle stop tour of his career, the highs and the lows so far. Um, but he crystallized down a range of lessons for us. And the first one was have a plan. But he said to have a plan beyond winning. So we all in the business world may be familiar with the term of KPIs, key performance indicators. So he spoke about it's not just about winning a championship or winning a league or anything else like that it's also about having the underlying um, plan around um, respect consistency culture and identity and to me in my mind, it sounded like the, he was very focused on not just the conscious side of the team, but the subconscious in the team as well. And particularly the path towards getting to that place, he said, you need to start off with culture, move towards having an identity, which leads to a higher purpose. That then sets behaviour and standards, which moves on to ownership before you have player-led leadership. The second point that he made was um, you need to do two things. You need to think about winning in the here and now and also need to build for the future. Now, it's something that, and you'll hear me talk about this a number of times in the summary, um, it's something that he mentioned a lot was about do, trying to do two very different things at once. And the one book that I've read that around leadership that has been very good uh, around that area and just how to, um, how to do both simultaneously despite the fact that they can sound that they're completely contrasting is good to great. An absolute classic, of course, in leadership. So just wanted to mention that to you. Uh, number three, he said, understand the culture before com performance and not the other way around. And he spoke for a really for the first part of the session, he really focused an awful lot on culture. And he spoke about how it has to start from the top, it has to be consistent and so on. But he did say that it's a leader who needs to drive the culture and sustain it and not the other way around. He said that you have to understand what you stand for because if you understand what you stand for, well then it'll ease decision making. And of course, if you don't know what you stand for, well then that's going to make things much more difficult. Um, then he went on to say that the more aligned that the culture is with the organisation, let's say whether it's a club or whether it's a business, he said the less time it takes for it to really embed. Um, then he said that culture leads to expectations, which leads to beliefs, which leads to behaviours. So rather than try trying to change behaviour, start with culture and build out from there. Uh, number four is that he said you have to build your identity. And he said, um, he had a great graph. Now, I, I can't obviously recreate it here. Uh, with you, but he, he had a very interesting graph of, um, so motivation was on the y-axis and then he had behaviour on the x-axis and at the bottom left hand corner he had me, so this is a uh, very selfish, like self-introspective um, individualistic type of an idea and then up at the top right hand corner which is high in motivation and high in behaviour, he had cause and he said that is where you need a team to be, is that the behaviour and the motivation needs to be for the team and he says then that self suppresses behaviour then as a result and that that is where you really need to get people to. Um, do you know what he told us a very interesting and an interesting idea about how he actually implemented this right because he to be fair to him he really did move beyond ideas and you know concepts and graphs and visuals and um, he he gave some very practical examples and I'll tell you one thing that that, that he mentioned was he said that um, at one stage with the team he went out to the mothers of the pair, oh, sorry, the mothers of the players, sorry, and he asked them to write a letter uh, to their sons to talk about the impact that them being an international player had on them. And then he sent, then he put that in a certificate and then he gave that to the to the players. And he said that was a real boost um, in terms of an understanding of, of, of identity and of importance and of pride, etc. So I could just well imagine that the impact that that, that would have had. Um, then he also, uh, number five, he went on to say, make sure that you have developed credibility in your organization and in particular what he what he speaks about there is that you have to have credibility as a leader you have to have a sense of you know doing what you say you're going to do and a, and a wide variety of other things that I, I haven't time to go into in in every aspect but one thing that he did mention that I really took away from it and he repeated it and then I repeated it uh, at the end as well is 
he said that it's important to manage with a telescope and a microscope. And when you think about that, that's a very, very strong analogy and it's very telling, it's very practical as well, is that while you have to look into the future and look all, in many ways beyond what you can maybe easily see, it's also very important to take care of the here and now and to take care of the detail. Um, number six is that he said you need to be a great leader and there are 10 characteristics of those. The um, uh, leader is authentic, they've got good communication skills, both macro and micro. He said that you need to create and align people to a cause, you need to develop a point of view. You need to be good with people, you need to sense the mood in the camp, um, you need to build trust and again that's where he repeated, do what you say you're going to do, that is the number one way of doing so. He said you need to have the moral courage to do the right thing, uh, you need to be very focused on and be very good uh, with your body language and he says you also need to establish belief and make performance meaningful. And then he showed us a couple of moments, just moments, um, whether they were pictures or slight vi short videos, just of moments that can really, really matter in a career. So whether it's winning a final um, or whether it's recovering from injury or whatever it might be, he said people need to hang on for those. He said that they'll work years for moments. And uh, Number seven, he said that you need to develop talent through your leadership. And, uh, and particularly what he's talking about there is how to learn how to be uh, a good leader. So he said you need to develop your understanding of leadership. Now, personally, I find it a very nebulous topic. Um, as somebody that is quite interested in it and have studied it for a while it's a very very nebulous topic in fact many people can't even really define it so but he actually said that that wasn't an issue he said what you need to do is to develop your understanding of leadership in, in any way that that you can and uh, just a slight point actually um, the best book that I've ever read on leadership the one that made it most practical and um, that I have read anyway has been the leadership pipeline I have said I think it's I think it's a great it's a it's a great help in, in that regard he said now here's an example of when he again spoke about balance two different things that are very different he said you need to balance variety and consistency you need to balance freedom and responsibility and uh, and he says you also need to put in place good habits because that is what allows talent to grow and when you look at uh, a lot of different people who are very successful whether they're leaders themselves or inspire leadership in others um, I've you know I've often looked into this and, and I've thought you know what have what daily habits do they have the key thing is that they have daily habits and that was his point is that you have to put the good habits in place one size doesn't fit all and then he gave us a formula he said uh, you need to review learn and grow review learn and grow review learn and grow he says over and over and over again doesn't matter what age doesn't matter what stage doesn't matter how good you are that needs to be the case he said in his own scenario so in a sporting environment particularly in rugby he says you need to be a leader a coach and a manager uh, he said you have to be an expert in all three but the the real secret is knowing the right proportions of each at the right time. He said you need to get the balance right. Then he moved on to talk about management principles. So he said um, management involves getting the best out of people but setting the structure around their skill sets. He said you need to be adaptable and flexible to fit into the management system but then it's non-negotiable. Then he said, you must be absolutely 100% very, very clear on roles and responsibilities and stick to it. He said, you need, again, just like he did with, with, with leadership, he said, you need to learn to be a better manager. He said, I started off as a teacher and I went on to be head coach of England Rugby. He said, the point is, is that I didn't know how to be a manager before. I had to learn and so can you. He said, you need to be organised. Do what you say you'll do. Again, he repeated that. And then he said, uh, you need to communicate, to connect with people, and then they will commit. That is the way in which he does so. Um, he said, accountability is key. Now, he didn't elaborate on a huge amount, but what he did say is don't wait for organic leadership to just happen by accident. He said um, accountability happens within a team when people are accountable to themselves, they're accountable to their teammates, they're willing to call them out and of course also willing to celebrate their uh, their successes together as well. And then he says when all else is equal, cohesion is king. Um, now he made this point in the context of boards, right, is that he said you need to have the right processes in place but he didn't finish the sentence there. Uh, again, it's something that he picked up on earlier. He said, you need to have the right processes in place to facilitate good decision making. And also given all that's going on at the moment with COVID-19 and with the really quick decisions that have to be made, um, or you know, also very quick decisions that can have very far reaching effects. He said, all of that's very, very important but the structures need to be in place to facilitate that quick decision making. He said change is required for high performance. And then he said, uh, he also spoke about the performance clock. Now I, I found this again, a very, very visual idea. So he said, some people are at different stages in their performance clock. 
he said some people are at six o'clock and of course some people are at their peak at 12 o'clock but some people are at nine o'clock and they're at 10 o'clock but he said how do you get people to move from nine to ten to eleven to twelve but even further than that how do you get people to stay at twelve and it's not just about people it's about the team and that's where you have to be very conscious of the subtle efforts that you need to make in order to do that he said we need to use failure uh, as a school for success and in addition you need he uh, sorry I just, I'll give you the context to this so um, when he was leaving England and uh, England rugby he was talking to to, he said a very blunt Australian colleague and he was asking for advice on, on what he should do next and so on like that and he wasn't feeling great and uh, and then um, when he asked his Australian colleague for advice he said the Australian colleague said he said make sure that wherever you go next you want to go 100% and make sure 100% that they want you and I think that that's a very good um, it's a good takeaway for anybody particularly maybe who's leaving one company and moving to another leaving a board and moving to another um, or even you know maybe potentially closing one business and moving to another is that you have to make sure you want to go and that you'll be welcome when you get there. He then, uh, he brought this then to a close by talking about staying in the blue. He said, rather than in the red zone, which is full of passive aggressive and, you know, negative feedback loops, he said, you need to stay in the moment, you need to focus on what you can do. And then he finally spoke about the three glass balls that you have in life. He said, family, work and health. And he said, uh, you need to manage how you're juggling those glass balls because if one of them fall and they crash, that can have a detrimental effect on everything. And then he also spoke about, you know, the balance that we all need to have between savouring life and making an impact. He put them at both ends of the spectrum and he said you know he deviates between the two um then he answered some questions so des asked him first of all he said uh so when you're you know playing a country how much does the culture of the country affect the um the, the way in which you would you would you would play them and um so then then Stuart went on to talk about the importance of actually understanding the culture of the country that you're seeking to defeat and you know we made the uh we made the parallel then that often when you're trying to we're like you know in many cases we're not trying to defeat a country we're trying to take on a client and understanding their culture is very very helpful when it comes to to, to doing business with them in advance of the sale and then of course during it as well Ronan then spoke about the ambiguity of stakeholder in a team because he said there's lots of people who seek to be managers and leaders within a team and right back he came back to brass tax Stuart in answering this and he just said you need to clarity around roles and responsibilities and stick to it and uh, and particularly he said you know it's not just about who makes the call but who communicates the call as well uh, when it comes to illustrating that. Emer then asked what do you say to a team who is losing at half time and uh, and what exactly is the pep talk that goes on in the in the dressing room so he answered this very candidly actually and he said well first of all uh, what he said you can just imagine players come in off the pitch they're full of emotion he said so it's like the cup is full so what we do is that we seek to bring down the emotion he said that we have 12 minutes at that break we seek to bring down the emotion you know to, to empty out a bit of the emotion out of the cup we have a couple of conversations with key people in private. Then we, what we do is now that you know tension is, is down a little bit, then we focus on the two clear key things that we can do between now and the end of the match that can hopefully make the difference. So he said that really is the, the architecture of how that works. Carl then asked, how do you adapt to a culture? So when you are moving, like he did, into Lens Rugby, how do you adapt to their culture? And he gave a very simple answer. He said, ask good questions. Make sure and ask the questions that can help you to understand the culture from the teammates, siblings, to the history of the country. He said, that's what you need to do. Keith Barry then uh, appeared. You might remember him from last week and, of course, many other times before. Um, so then Keith asked, is there any mental homework that, uh, that a coach would give to a team when they're not playing at the moment? And he said, yes. He said, uh, focusing on the uh, forming, storming norming and performing he said that it's a uh, it's really important to you know to understand the players are going to go through change as everyone has they're going to take it in different ways that's the storming bit and then he says you know norming is when people get used to it and then we can focus on performing so he said it's just helping them and navigate through that process another very interesting thing he said um that i hadn't heard somebody say before is that he said that they've all he's also put together a short movie of their past the present and where, where they seek to go in the future he said it's important to keep the, their voice his voice in their heads uh, it's an interesting point because that was the first time he mentioned something of an audio nature um, and he just said you have to keep the voice in people's heads then Manus went on to ask uh, how do you stay true to your how do you stay true to your principles when everything else is going wrong and uh, and again he had very like he had very simple answer to everything he knew the answer to everything uh, he said quiet your mind he said it's the answer is mindfulness and meditation stay in the present and he said you need to learn how to be calm in big moments again that's something that every single person needs to know and particularly people who are in a leadership position. And then finally, Elma asked, um, she says, um, for, for when we're dealing with people, she says we're leaders and not necessarily counsellors. So how do you deal with people who are 
um, how I suppose how do you deal with people in getting a sense of how they are because that was something that he said is that it's important to, to get a sense of how, how your team is feeling and how to react to that so then he said um, he said get out from behind your laptop and he said get out onto the shop floor in his case it could be a gym floor it could be the pitch it could be wherever he said open up your ears and get them to the ground and also have a feedback loop with somebody who, who does that very very well and then he finished up finally by saying get ahead of the curve to see what's around the corner